everything from the, the, the rough landscape to the detailed instruction of the major social media platforms and some practical tips on how to uh, manage and how to maintain the growth on these social media platforms. The reason we are doing this or why you need some understanding about the Chinese social media landscape is basically China have its own digital ecosystem. Uh, from searching engine to e-commerce platforms, from e-payment to social media or travel OTA, everything is on its own. Partly because China have uh, banned some of the Western platforms, but another thing is about the localization of the services. For example, Amazon and Apple Pay uh, and Booking.com are all available in China. They are not banned, but still uh, they are facing great difficulties competing with local uh, competitors. We'll start by introducing the evolution of internet. I bet some people here today have experienced the time that using uh, writing blogs, using BBS, or you are internet surfing to get information from a PC website. So in the web 1.2 age, uh, everything is about content, it's about digital content that website will be a portal to publish information and then we come to the stage in so-called web web 2.0 that people become really important with the social media emerging uh, in twitter facebook or whatever messenger myspace all these uh, things are happening in the web 2.0 and nowadays we are facing uh, the stage that all these content and network and, and people and the social media are engaging with each other. Some academic researchers call it web 1.0 plus web 2.0, uh, but no matter how you call it, we are facing a time that everything is connected with each other. And for the next stage, with all the devices being more and more smart, with all the services you can provide, uh, based on internet and with internet of things, with AI, with VR, uh, the services will also be integrated with content and network. After understanding the evolution of internet and we come to China, there are three giants to look at previously, people call it BAT, is Baidu, Alibaba and Tencent. The companies are internet and e-commerce ecosystem involved in both distinct and competing markets. Uh, so the BAT in China, their core business at the very beginning, Baidu is for search, uh, it's Chinese Google. Tencent started from gaming and instant messaging uh, from QQ and games, it's still very strong at games, and Alibaba from e-commerce. But these three giants, this BAT in China are now a big, group that they can do everything nowadays. They cover all business uh, areas. But today, BAT is somehow already in the past tense. There's one company you must uh, keep an eye on, it's ByteDance. Uh, they had their famous product and the famous app is called TikTok. Many people didn't know that the most downloaded app in the Western uh, internet ecosystem, TikTok in, in, in this year, uh, is from a Chinese company, ByteDance. Uh, in China, they have a Chinese version called Douyin, but it's basically the same thing, but, have, uh, but available in different markets. And here is a chart, so you can see um, how the different groups, the new BATA, BATA, uh, for giants are having their uh, you know, businesses. So for social, for video streaming, for entertainment and news, and also for e-commerce, everyone is having their war uh, with each other, basically. And to start with, we'll have a look at Tencent and WeChat. Since many people are thinking how to utilize WeChat into their business, into their brand promotions, uh, so we'll have the introduction of WeChat at the very beginning to start with. Um, many of you might have already been using WeChat yourself as a messaging app. But WeChat contains three main sections. The chat is why so many people call it the Chinese WhatsApp. Uh, so you can text people with, with the internet. Another thing is the WeChat moments. Uh, is a feature similar to Facebook timeline. You are sharing whatever you see, video, text, pictures, 
uh, or even news articles in your WeChat moments. Uh, and, and that is personal. That's only available to your uh, personal network friends that you added on WeChat. Another thing is the wallet section. In this wallet section, you can basically do anything you want here. You can show your uh, green code that you are not affected with coronavirus. You can make bookings. You can pay the electricity fees. Uh, you, can do, you can donate money to charities. You can do anything here in the wallet section. So it's more like services uh, that make people stay in this app so people don't have to open another app for anything else. Here, for the chat part, there's one important function that many businesses or brands are, are working on it for a very long term. It's so-called official accounts. So as you can see here, uh, the service account is one type of the official account appear as friends in the main chat interface. Every time this official account send a message, it will send a notification just like some friends has been messaging you. Uh, so it has better notification account. Another uh, uh, official account type is called subscription accounts, but all subscription account will be folded into this one folder. Uh, the, the opening rate or the, the notification results is not as ideal as the service account, but the subscription account is uh, good to send every single day, but the service account can only be sent out once per week. So basically four times a month. Uh, there are pros and cons for each and for subscription account is mostly for, let's say, news channels or your account has a lot of content to communicate with the audience. And then service account can be integrated uh, with less content uh, and with some service APIs. Apart from the uh, official account part is basically the chat groups or your friends uh, chat surface user face that you can uh, in a, you can just talk to people with messaging anything you want as people are familiar with this is a basic structure of WeChat functions but then the key concept is that for businesses and brands uh, do you really need an official account the thing is, nowadays in China, less and less people are going to use PC and traditional websites. Now the official account is more and more acting the so-called new official website because people stay on this app for such a long time. And this official account is basically acting as a website can offer. Anything you can imagine can be offered in this WeChat account. And through a QR code scanning or uh, a, a easy ID searching, people can follow your account and stay engaged. I would suggest that all businesses should consider to run an official account, but it, it should be depending on which account type and also the frequency and also the, con the content messages that needs some really good uh, and, and solid planning at the very beginning. Otherwise, this account management will not be long-term because once you have started a WeChat official account, that's basically a commitment of a weekly or monthly update. If you don't have enough good content to impress your audience, it will be very natural that the followers you tried so hard to follow your account will be unfollowing. And then the next trend that uh, we should look at is the mini program. Because with over 1 billion monthly active users, uh, WeChat hosts the largest number of monthly active users among all Chinese apps. It is, however, losing its grip on the mobile uses in China you know, slightly. And some data shows that uh, the monthly active users have declined a bit from the peak year. But at the same time, the official account are struggling to attract attention somehow uh, because there are so many and, and people, a user's and audience attention for per day cannot be distracted with, with so many different things. While well, in China's digital world and in the WeChat ecosystem, every brand and every account is trying so hard. Well, recent data have shows that even though it's difficult to run the official account, 
all businesses are still considering open it. Well, another thing is that WeChat mini program have proven to be valuable as channels for e-commerce uh, or CRM management, particular, uh, particularly for flash sales, providing that the brand can deliver traffic to the app. So the next moves for most brands will be mini programs. Thinking about the days that as a Western brand, uh, okay, every, every brand has to have a Facebook account, and then the next stage, every, every brand should have an Instagram account. And then for some brands, you are considering developing an app. Well, in WeChat ecosystem, everything is, you know, solved within the official account and the mini program because you don't have to close this app and jump to another one to open another real app because the mini program is cheaper, faster, uh, and easier. Uh, and and, and it's, it's basically killing the app store and it will be very effective website functions as uh, uh, on top of the official accounts. With that, with this both official account and mini pro program we are just introducing, uh, it is basically providing any service possibilities, community management and CRM management you can imagine in China, no matter what businesses you are in, it doesn't have to be a B2C, manage, uh, B2C industry. So that's for the official account and the mini program. Another thing I'm going to introduce is the searching function in WeChat. It is also because people are staying in this app for such a long time, every single day. So if you scroll down a little bit, there will be a searching bar appearing on the top. And you can put keywords over there and anything you want to search, no matter it's a wiki page, some tips or some past chat history uh, or some apps, which is mini program in this ecosystem will be shown as the results over there. The last thing uh, about the functionalities of WeChat is WeChat advertising. We have received a comment, uh, a question previously asking about WeChat advertising possibilities. So basically there is several ways to do WeChat advertising. One way is to use the programmatic WeChat advertising functionalities, which is a sold service by WeChat platform that can be available on WeChat moments or uh, your account will be shown as a banner uh, on some other popular accounts. So that is super uh, programmatic and somehow precise because you can choose the age, gender, location, and the interest and, and period of time about uh, the advertising timing you want to invest on. Another thing is to use KOL, so more softer and organic way uh, that you contact some other accounts and say, hey, can we uh, do some collaboration content or can you publish our account because we have paid you or there's some, uh, you know, some cooperative uh, projects. So that's another way, but that's basically uh, the, the hard way or the more programmatic way is running by WeChat platform directly. If you're interested, you have to be having uh, open the account on the WeChat account backstage. And after you have get the qualification of WeChat advertising, then you can contact the sales team of WeChat platform to invest on that. But um, after a few years of, of running WeChat marketing and WeChat accounts for our clients and, and doing research on this subject, uh, we have always come to this question is that, does your business really need a WeChat official account? So the thing is, the quality really matters because so many accounts are over there, even though the 1 billion monthly active users are there, but it is also very difficult to stand out you have to know that the, the quality of the content, the quality of the community man management really matters if you want to gain success from WeChat official accounts. And another thing is that it takes a long time. You don't expect you will get a high percentage of, uh, of this 1 billion monthly active users because it is basically uh, very difficult to gain followers on WeChat. On the other hand, if you have 100 key followers of your account and those 100 followers are super important investors or super important clients, 
then it, it is really worth it that you create the content only for that 100 people. Because in that case, the WeChat account for your brand is more acting a client's management tool instead of uh, a, a mass communication tool. So before that, you have to understand when you establish a WeChat official account, what is your expectation and how to attract more key audiences. There's a news happening this week that um, WeChat Wallet, well, basically within the WeChat third part, have a new credit, credit store functionality sim similar to Alipay. Um, so sharing economy in China has been super well developed. You can share uh, umbrellas in the metro station. You can share a power bank. Uh, you can share a bike. You can share taxi, a room. So basically anything. And now WeChat following, with, uh, following Alipay has joined the battle that providing this credit, credit store. The higher score you have, um, the more sharing economy or... Um, the life will be easier because once you rent some power bank or umbrella or all those things, you don't have to pay the deposit because you have a very good credit score system uh, on WeChat. And, and these kind of new things are, are actually uh, leading projects invented by China. Somehow, even though you're not talking about the China or international uh, business engagement, thinking about how this kind of uh, system, how the leading ideas of Chinese internet might be an inspiration for the local uh, businesses, no matter where you are, there could be some, some references you can use. So next we'll come to Weibo. Uh, what does Weibo mean actually? Uh, WeChat is in Chinese is called Weixin and Weibo, there's also a Wei. Wei in Chinese meaning micro um, and Bo meaning blog. So if you look at the monthly active users here, uh, WeChat has more than 1 million and Weibo has basically half. And in the first quarter of 2020, Weibo, the recent statistic shows it has 550 million monthly active users. So it's a big increase during coronavirus because people need information so much. People need to search for real time and solid and, and trustworthy information during the coronavirus period of time. Uh, and Weibo is the platform to do that. How Weibo gets started, the idea, uh, I think it was from Twitter that they, they even use the same rules that you, you can only publish 140 words. Um, and that is not even the same language, you know, in, in, in Twitter, there's 140 English words, and then in, in Chinese, it's the same. Um, so some people call Weibo the Chinese Twitter, um, but actually it means, as I said, it's the micro blog. So uh, what Weibo celebrated its 10th anniversary last year. Um, so it started from 2009. Uh, WeChat started from 2011. They are less than 10 years ago. And also um, Weibo official account nowadays is mostly good for uh, B2C industries. I have to say it's not quite suitable for B2B industries nowadays. As I said, starting from 2009, for the first one to two years, this platform is not uh, much a thing. And then something around 2011 and 2012, Weibo is really popular. And even B2B audiences or even like, you know, more middle-aged or more mature or more upper middle class people are also using Weibo as daily active users. And in recent years, I have to be honest that Weibo has been losing the popularity for some groups of audiences and, and users, uh, including the ones I've just mentioning. Uh, so right now you can see a lot of uh, commercialized entertainment, uh, traveling, food, fashion, or this leisure tone of voices, uh, information and news. So that's basically more B2C brand oriented nowadays. Similar to WeChat, Weibo also have this Weibo searching functionality and Weibo advertising are also selling the top search uh, 
as 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 a product. So basically, if you want your huge campaign, your biggest campaign, to be seen by all Weibo users, you can pay the money to get on the top list of the of the searching results. Another thing to mention about Weibo is the KOL industry. Uh, even though KOLs in China now have multiple platforms, but Weibo is still the majority of them, or most of them get started. But nowadays, Weibo also have a lot of zombie followers uh, that this uh, 500 million active users might not be real somehow. Uh, even for the KOL you know, posts, you, you see 200 comments or reposts that might not be exactly um, you know, the real ones. So somehow you also have to keep an eye on monitoring what is happening on Weibo uh, from real time. And for international businesses, if you want to target the B2C industry, if you have a lot of uh, fresh and up-to-date content to share, uh, Weibo is definitely something you have to consider uh, as the industry I just mentioned, food, motherhood, travel, uh, entertainment, consumer goods. But for B2B, I think it depends on the size. For small and medium-sized B2B brands, I would not suggest you to consider Weibo. Uh, Weibo, but for bigger ones, let's say you have uh, 10, more than 10,000 employees globally, uh, then you might also want to consider Weibo as a communication tool. Uh, let's say during the coronavirus or even in, before that, if there's anything about crisis public relations management, Weibo is still the platform to make announcements uh, to the Chinese audiences. And for Weibo official accounts, uh, there are also a lot of news flowing over there. As for our team, our Nordic friend company, we are the only Weibo Nordic content partner in this region. And we are cooperating account called Weibo Nordics uh, that is, has almost 1 million followers and now broadcasting news about the Nordic regions um, to Weibo users every single day. And it is a partnership with Weibo headquarter directly uh, and then Nordic friend team managing the content and do the news editing part on the daily basis. If you guys need any help or wish to, wish to know more about the Weibo Nordic project, uh, you can feel free to contact me afterwards and be more than happy to introduce more. So that is the two major social media platforms, top two in China. Uh, but I have to say there are some more you have to consider. Number one, TikTok. Uh, there are some uh, controversials, uh, things happening to TikTok overseas, outside China. But then in China, it is Douyin, it's the Chinese TikTok. It's the same company. Uh, it's a short video app that gains lots of, lo lots of followers now with more than 400 million monthly active users. We, uh, Douyin live stream is also getting popular no matter for the normal live stream or the e-commerce live stream, because the shopping charts can also be added to Douyin directly from TMO or Taobao. Um, this is something to look at because short videos based on algorithm um, methodologies is somehow a trendy thing nowadays globally. And if you want to look at how to win the audience uh, for the next generation or the, for the next period of time, the traditional way of using text and pictures is somehow a little bit old fashioned. So you have to consider how to win the audience by super visualized content. Following with that is Billy Billy. Uh, it sounds weird, but it's a very popular uh, Chinese streaming and video website. Now has 172 million monthly active users. It's extremely popular among the young people. Um, but you know, if your brand and your product is targeting the young generation, something uh, under 30 years old, you have to think about maybe upload your videos to Bilibili as well. And it is also a very important platform, you know, as you as a, as, as a marketer to browse the website and see how is the young wives and how is the young generations in China nowadays are looking at the videos. Uh, it is very different compared to the ones you see from Tencent Video, Youku, or ITE, because 
uh, Tencent Video, Youku, or Aichi. Uh, some people call them Chinese YouTube, but nowadays they are getting more and more to Netflix style. Uh, so there's a lot of TV dramas, a lot of movies, but not for uh, short uh, videos. The next one I'm going to introduce is Xiao Hongshu. It's a Chinese. If you translate it word by word, it means little red book. Uh, it, it is uh, also quite emerging popular platform combining e-commerce, combining, combining lifestyle, and combining KOL. It has more than 100 million monthly active users as well. So nowadays, if you are selling some goods, uh, some, some con consumer uh, products to China, Xiao Hongshu KOLs and Xiao Hongshu marketing and content uh, should also be something to consider. But for a business, if you want to open a organizational account on these platforms, I would suggest you start, uh, start from you know, the, the checklist I presented in the order today that you consider WeChat at the very beginning. The, sec the second one, consider Weibo if it is something uh, you are to look at. And then for Douyin, um, it is a short video social media platform, so you can invest on advertising and KOLs over there. Uh, there's a recent trend that some brands, some international travel uh, industry DMOs are also opening official Douyin accounts. Uh, some uh, local and domestic consumer goods or even car industry players are also opening official Douyin accounts, but not for everyone yet. Uh, so I would suggest you to um, follow the trends of Douyin and maybe one day it will also be, you know, a must for all brands to come to Douyin if we come to that stage. And then Little Red Book at this very moment, not so um, popular for uh, organizational accounts, uh, but for KOL marketing and stuff, that is definitely um, something you should look at. After introducing all these platforms, including you know, the ones that young generations are looking at, uh, the key question is which channel to choose and how to maintain. Apart from the, the list, the checklist I was just mentioning, I think it is also, de also depending on your budget, on your expectation, on the targeting audience you are trying to communicate, and also on your team. Because once you have started doing social media marketing to China, that is a commitment. It is a long term, it's a daily job. It is something uh, you have to have a very clear plan for the upcoming weeks, months, and years. It is it's basically nonstop. So if you have uh, not been ready yet to have that kind of commitment to communicate with the Chinese audience and to gain success and, and, and make the best uh, effects on top of those platforms, then pl please take some time to plan it first and to understand the platform first. Um, because as, as you can see, this is a super overwhelming landscape we are talking about. Uh, and, and people are stick to the Western social media for a very long time, but with this 1.4 billion market, with that population, uh, it is also worth it to invest on something, but please do it smartly and, and, and wisely. And in the end, I would like to share um, this quote from Kevin Kelly. Uh, he's kind of a pioneer on the internet development. Uh, he has mentioned this paragraph in 2005. Please bear in mind that the internet in 2005, it is history already compared to this year, but let's see what he has said. He said, how could we create so much so fast and so well? In fewer than 4,000 days, we have encoded half a trillion versions of our collective story and put them in front of one billion people, or one sixth of the world's population. That remarkable achievement was not in anyone's 10-year plan. And that that questions following that, why aren't we more amazed by this fullness? Kings of old would have gone to war to win such abilities, and only small children would have dreamed such a magic window could be real. And nowadays, in 2020, with coronavirus, with, with everything we have uh, at this moment, think about 
the internet development to the whole world and think about the internet and social media and digital development development to China. Uh, why aren't we more amazed by everything? 